All right, guys, today we are going to be using uh, one of the sensors that you might get if you bought a uh, one of those 37-in-1 or 45-in-1 uh, sensor kits. And that's this one right here. And it is the flame sensor. Now, this little uh, detector here picks up the particular infrared signature or ultraviolet signature of flames. Um, it also picks up outdoor lighting uh, from the sun, so you have to be kind of careful with that. This is not a good sensor for outdoors. <clears throat> it has a digital output here on this side and an analog output on this side. We're gonna be doing an analog read today. And this 10 turn potentiometer um, allows you to adjust sensitivity. So to get started, we are just going to plug in the red into our power rail and the brown into our ground rail. And our sense wire, the yellow, is gonna to go to analog zero. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a flame alarm. And to do that, we are going to use two LEDs and the active buzzer. The active buzzer is the one that only needs to be turned on with a digital right high. The passive buzzer, if you recall, is the one that needs to be written to with the tone command. So we will hook up the buzzer and a couple LEDs. These blue things are just jumpers. I've got them going to the uh, ground rail just to make things easier. We're going to use a green LED on the left. Always remember the cathode, the positive, or the anode, the positive connection is the longer one. And we are going to use a red LED on the left side. So that's the makeup of our alarm. We're going to run our signals from the anode of the LED to digitals 11. And digital 9. And our signal wire from the buzzer. goes to 10. Something like that. Then let's write a real little bit of code here, real simple, and we'll see how she works. All right, let's look at the code for the fire sensor. Now, instead of setting um, our integers as variables, we're going to now use the define. It actually uses less memory, so it's a more efficient way to program. And as long as we're uh, just setting constants and not things are going to change, it's going to work out just fine. So we define flame sensor A0, green LED on 11, buzzer is on 10, red LED is on 9, and we're going to declare this variable called isFire and set its initial value is 0. Now, let's skip that for right now. Come down here to void setup. We're setting all of our pins for output. And we're going to start our serial comms so that we can monitor the output of that sensor and know where we want to set the trigger level. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say is fire our variable is equal to the analog read of the flame sensor which is a zero and after uh, evaluating it for a little bit I determined that for my best use a value of less than 100 is what I want so we're creating a condition for the trigger 
that reads about a thousand for no flame and twenty five for flame. So on less than a hundred, it is going to call a function called alarm. Now the reason we did this as a function is so that we don't have to write all the stuff in the main loop of our program to be run over and over and over taking up memory and slowing things down. This is our entire main program right here. Read the sensor, serial print, which we can eliminate once we have our value, and the condition and call the function. So to create your own function, it's as simple as this. Void alarm. Now, if you want your function to return a value, like to a variable, you would put it in between these parentheses, but ours doesn't return anything, so it really doesn't matter. Then we have the curly bracket, just like anything else, and we begin. Digital write buzzer high, digital write LED, red LED high, pause for half a second, shut them off. Turn on the green, pause. Turn off the green, turn off the buzzer, wait for two seconds. Now that's it. That's the entire alarm code. So it's down here now. And all we have to do anytime we want that alarm code is call alarm. Now the reason we've done it this way is because I intend for this little experiment here to become part of a whole house automation system kind of thing. So we're going to have a fire alarm, we're going to have a humidity alarm, a temperature alarm, a pressure alarm, all sorts of things. And we'll have different functions created for the different things. And then our program in the void loop area is simply going to monitor things and call things. Everything else will be predefined. Pretty simple, right? All right, then let's send it out to our board and go from there. All right, guys, everything has been programmed. The sketch has been sent. And remember how we wrote it. So if the flame sensor senses the particular UV spectrum of a flame, it's going to send a signal to the Arduino, which is going to flash the LEDs and sound the buzzer in one second increments. So here's a lighter. Pretty cool? I think so. There's some interesting applications you could do with this. Uh, say you had a toddler and you're afraid of them turning on the stove. You could put this package into say something like Arduino Nano and put it out by your stove or something Wi-Fi and it could monitor your house for flame when you're not home. So. If you like this, please like, comment, and share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for?